The food crisis is growing. And our tables will soon be empty if the world's population continues to increase and food production decreases. We're not producing enough for our population. I will do better if I can get source, financial source. To stop this dizziness in its track, Helen Paul and I, from Donga, visit the highlands and lowlands of Nigeria, connecting the food heroes on the front lines to experts who can solve their problems, position them to meet the growing demand and unearth possibilities locked up in fallow grounds. This is Farm and Fortune. Since knows a lot about maize. The quality of seed affected my yield. If I have the good seed, it boosts my production. But if the seed won't allow him to be great, can he achieve much? Hello and welcome. This is Farm and Fortune. On today's episode, we'll be going all the way to Niger State to meet a maize farmer. You know maize is a staple in Nigeria. Hello, welcome to Farm and Fortune. My name is Ellen Paul. And I'm Frank Donga. I need to go and do my interview. My guests are around. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'm taking a flight to Niger. Helen Paul, we trek. Let's go to Niger State. Let's go. When his parents passed on the farm, his siblings were not really interested. But Sunday Martins Ibrahim stepped up to the challenge of farming. But he didn't do it anyhow. First, he went to school to study crop production and then returned to show them how maize farming is done as a real G. My father was a farmer and after his uh, death, I took up the challenge. We are now in number and it's only me that can go into the production that can, can took from, the, from his farm. I went back to school again and study crop production in order to know the time of application of fertilizer the type of uh, input I'm going to use in my farm and the right time for the planting and harvesting of my crop. A whole crop production expert who can choose to farm any crop he likes. Why maize? Why? I choose maize as a, as a major crop in my farm because one, it's very, in times of cultivation, it's very easy to, to till. The labor involved is just me too. He's not too tedious as the other crops. I like this guy. He's farming with the locals, but not thinking like the locals. I do guide local farmers during the time of planting and application of fertilizer. You don't look bad at all. Farming must have been good to you. Maybe I should start farming too, Seb. My father used this to sponsor the rest family when he was alive. My name is Mr. Sunday Ibrahim. I'm a maize farmer. I have in the studio today, Dr. Vicent Adurami Bamodupe, who works at the Institute of Agricultural Research and Training in Ibadan. Good to have you, sir. Thank you very much, moderator. Uh-uh. You're smiling. You, it's so, as a doctor, doctor in soil, in what's the good? Doctor of soil. Of soil? <laughs> yes, not of farmer. The, the grand. Yes. Good to have you on Farm and Fortune. Thank you. Why do farmers like Sunday, Martins, need someone like you, a professional? Well, actually, soil is the basis of agriculture. Hmm. Why? Because you can have good inputs, but if you have a bad soil, it's as good as you are going to have negligible yield that will lead to poverty. So every farmer must come to people like you first so that you help them check their soil? Yes, to know what is there, we can give them expert advice on what to grow and how to get the best yield out of their labor. I have another visiting expert from the Nigeria Institute of Soil Science, and she'll be unveiling to us the secret eating in Mashegun area of Niger State. Let's go to Mrs. Agatha Christie, over to you. Thank you, Helen. My name is Agatha Christie Ojapa from Nigerian Institute of Soil Science. Today, let's go to Mashegu area of Niger State. This area, predominantly, the farmers grow maize crop. And from the soil fertility summary, we can look at, we can see some of the limiting micronutrients and micronutrients. The major limiting micronutrients are available phosphorus, calcium, and total nitrogen. Why the micronutrient that limits the production in this area is boron? Let's go to the soil fertility status. Mm -hmm. 
So here we recommend that the farmers we apply phosphorus, particularly diammonium phosphate, at 90 kg per hectare, which is equivalent to 1.8 bags. And this application should be done at the state at planting stage. Why urea can be used in order to supply more nitrogen that the crop needs. And this urea application is normally applied as top dress. And about 80 kg per hectare is needed to improve the yield in this area, which is equivalent to 1.6 back. The urea also can also be applied at the second stage at 80 kg per hectare, which is also equivalent to 1.6. And this application is normally done at 45 days after crop emergence. The micronutrient can be applied through foliar spray. That is the boron, copper, and zinc. This can be done through boron stain. The farmers are encouraged to leave the crop residues on the farm and not to take it away, as well as ensure that the tillage is not so deep. If all of these practices can be put in place, the crop yield will ultimately increase and we'll be able to attain the food security drive of the federal government of Nigeria. Still to come, we separate the good from the bad and offer Sunday Martins a platter of options while our next generation farmers get in the field. Stay with us. Producing the food we eat takes more than a willing farmer and available soil. It involves tools, input materials, technology, and training delivered at the right time to farmers. One-stop shop connects farmers to supplies via a reliable network of brick and mortar stores positioned in and around farming communities. Before the coming of the one-stop shop, it has been so difficult for us to get our input. The moment you come, they'll take your name, video tape you, and then you pay, take the number of bags of fertilizer and other inputs. Reach out to the One Stop Shop team today. Email us at contact ng at ocpafrica.com. There is likely a One Stop Shop near you or agri promoters who would be delighted to find their way to you. You know how we do it on the DIY section? We have our next-gen farmers. And with me, I have Bolanle Okeya. That's me. Yeah, she's a um, content uh, executive, a media person. You work in the media, right? Yeah. Content associate. Content associate. And you also like, you know... Home gardening. Home gardening. Yeah. Interesting. Beautiful. I have uh, Timilen Yolasoji. He's a civil engineer. He's also into the retailing of uh, crops and farm uh, produce. That's interesting. Fantastic. So... What exactly, what problem are you guys going to solve for us today? Okay, um, on this episode of the DIY, what we're going to be doing is we're going to show you how to identify bad seed and good seed. Interesting. Okay, so Bolanli and Timileni are going to show us how to identify good seeds from bad seeds mm -hmm. with just simple things you can find at home. While our um, next-gen farmers are doing their thing, let's go over to EB in Mashegun Local Government of Niger and see what Sunday Martins is all up to. We'll be right back. First one, as usual, is money, capital. Sometimes operation, we do sometimes the ideal time we're supposed to do the right thing. If there is no money, sometimes we fall out, things fall apart because if you don't have money for you to bring laborers to the farm, it's always very terrible. The second one is in the aspect of uh, input, more especially for, uh, I mean, tractor. If at a particular place, you need, a particular time, you need to plant a particular crop, and there is no tractor for you. You cannot plant ordinarily like that. You have to plant first. And also, we face the challenges of uh, uh, insects, insect attacks during planting and during even harvesting. We face uh, uh, all these uh, pests to disrupt our crop. So those are the challenges we have. Sometimes we bought a uh, seed from markets, and sometimes from these uh, these agrochemical people that sell. See, I cannot differentiate it. 
until later, maybe after harvesting. That is when I'll know either whether the seed is good, good or bad. I would, I would have, uh, maybe want to have uh, the, maturity, the, the early maturity type and the shortest variety because of the climate, climate changes. The quality of seed affected my yield. If I have the good seed, it boosts my production. And by the time I have the, the seed is not okay, it reduces my production. Last year, I got my fertilizer, precisely MPK. I got it from uh, Ninja State Government. Then Urea, I got it from ordinary uh, sales people in the market. In terms of application of fertilizer, I use five bags of MPK, added up to uh, uh, one bag of urea. I use six bag of fertilizer, one, five MPK, one urea, to one uh, hectares of land through site placement method of application. I use our farmers from the village and pay them their labor. My yield always meet my expectation. The worst season, maybe it may be this year, because of the late planting I did. The last year we got it right. Three years ago, I got it right. But this year, the experience just be too rainfall. And I did late planting. Outside my school knowledge, aside my, my studies in the school, I've never uh, received any lecture on preservation of seed and storage. Sunny Martin is doing a great job. I'm beginning to think about it. That, I need to go into farming now. Or what do you think? Uh, but, but I think his intentions are very good, but he's struggling so hard. And sincerely speaking, we need another doctor to join us in the studio today with Dr. Vincent in the house already. So I want to bring in Mr. Zida. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Vincent. Thank you very much. But why is maize farming difficult in Nigeria? Well, uh, that, that's, that's a million dollar question. Hmm. Let me answer it from two perspectives. It depends on what you are looking at. For subsistence farmers, I don't think it's difficult because that has been their livelihood since when they were born. Great. So it's become like a, a passion and a cultural practice for them. But what they are getting out of it is what we can call, why is it difficult? Difficult. The gain is not as yeah, much not as much. the investment. Yes. But for large-scale farmers, I don't think it's really difficult for them because they have the resources, but they may not have the manpower and the expert advice to help them to achieve their output. So the, the, the soil and seed uh -huh. are the basis of your input. Because no, I don't understand. Take it again. Because, okay, you have the Let's story. talk in money. You have the soil as a capital given to us by God. Okay. What do you put into the soil? Mm. You put your Investments of money. And your fertilizer. That's right. So that's what we, it's not lead to what we call return on your investment. investments. So if you don't invest on quality seed, and also appropriate fertilizer and good agricultural practice. That is why we advocate that before you go into farming, one, like he said, the soil, very important. Must be properly checked. It has to be checked. Tested. You have to test it to know. That is good enough. The level of nutrients in, it. in the soil. One. Whether it will be able to sustain the crop that Great. you want to play, uh, plant. Plants. That is important. Then you now get the quality seed that is required because it is the potential of this seed that is expressed when you apply the other input. But how do you get quality seeds? Because sometimes they, some people mix it in the markets. You might not get the quality one. Yeah, like the video of uh, Sunday, Martin. Sunday Martins. He went to the, uh, to the market, open market to buy seed. We saw even uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, weevils. weevils even jumping out of what he was about to buy as seed. That is not right. Those are grains. Not seeds. Not seed. So how would farmer identify the difference between seeds and grains? Yes. Farmers will be able to identify between seed and grain from when they are going to buy. One, 
they have to get the seed from a known source, hmm. registered seed company. And for them to know, they have to look out for the National Agricultural Seed Council certification tag. Great. Now the Seed Council has improved on this tag. We now call it Seed Codex. This Seed Codex is like the, in the pharmaceutical, you have this panel on the drug that you buy, which you scratch and send an, uh, to a... Yes, a yes, to confirm how it's solid is it. We, we have now. ...in the seed sector. Great. So anytime a farmer is going to buy seed, you should watch out for that seed codex. For the label. For that label, where you will scratch and send the number to a particular code. So you now wait. Now you wait. You scratch it. The, yes. Within then they have to reply you. Within... And it's raining in the market. Seconds, they will reply will come. Okay, a few seconds. Okay. Yeah, it will, reply, it will reply you. Great, and great. And now see that, okay, this product you are buying... Is authentic. Is authentic and is and good. And is of good quality. Great. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Here with us, our next gen farmers, they are going to show us how to determine good seeds from bad seeds. So, you guys, fire away. Let me see what you want to do. We're using corn seed. We are for using corn seed for, for this project. experiment. But it works for any other kind of seed too that you want yeah, to plant. Most, 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 most seeds, seeds, seeds like actually. this. Okay, beautiful. So, we call it, we pour the corn inside the water. Oh, wow. Then, naturally, you see some corns will float on the water. Coming up hmm. Oh, wow. It's, some are floating already. Yeah, yeah. Those, those ones that are sunk at the bottom of the bowl are the good seeds. Oh, nice. Now, the ones that are floating are the bad ones. They are not good for planting. Oh. So the ones that are sunk at the bottom of the seeds, at the, of the bowl, you get them out and you can use it for planting. Purpose. Interesting, interesting. Let me share a little tip with you, something I also know myself. Okay. How to store some of these seeds in case you are not even ready to plant them. You know, you can always take part of the seed. This same plastic bag that you have, you know, yeah. you can still use it and put the seeds in the plastic bag and put it, as long as it's airtight, and put it where? In the, you can freeze it. Freeze it, exactly. <laughs> Thank you very much, guys. You guys have been amazing on the show. So that's our next gen farmers. They've been telling us how to differentiate good seeds from bad, bad seeds. seeds. Give it a try. Huh? Check it out. Try something yourself. Tag us, upload it on your social media handles, and tag us at Farm and Fortune on YouTube, if it's a video clip, Instagram, if it's a picture or a video clip. Let's see what you're up to. Uh, and on the other side now, Helen is going to be telling us what Sunday Martins can do to improve what he's doing. Let's check it out. Why are seeds so important, sir, Mr. Zida? Seeds are so important because, like I said earlier, mm -hmm. it is the starting point of crop production. Once you are able to get the seed right, you have solved the problem of crop production up to 50% because it determines the returns to investment up to that 50% once you get the seed right. And all other inputs contribute to actualizing the potential of the seed Great. itself. Great. Be it fertilizer, the management practices, water, irrigation water, whatever you put is to boost mm. the seed to express its poten potential, potential to the maximum. Seed is a living material. Mm -hmm. So by the time you put in the boots, in the boots, doesn't get the get fresh air. The, uh, you get to the house, uh, they are welcoming you. you. Forgot that you have seed seeds in, in the, the boots. boots. You keep it overnight. That singular overnight. Keeping up the seed in the boot is enough to destroy it. So we need to tell our so farmers that when they go and get their farmers. that when they go to get their seeds, they should not let it catch the seeds. Yes. They should put it back seat and on the AC. Maintaining the quality, one, you have to ensure that at the time that you harvest the seed, it is it has attained its uh, maturation. mature stage and that you don't harvest the seed with infected, with infestation happening even right from the field. Because what you bring out from the field is what you will store. Mm. So once it, and if it's infected, it's not good. From the field, 
what you will keep in the store will not stay long. So Before first it gets and foremost, destroyed. you have to ensure that there is, uh, the seeds are left to maturation. Properly. Properly. And where you have the highest potential in everything. Thank you. Uh, my doctor. And thank you, Mr. Zida. A still fan and fortune. And of course, we're talking about agriculture generally. Right now, we've been, you know, we've been talking about soil inputs and all of that. There's no way we talk about soil inputs without talking about fertilizer. We have someone from Febson as an expert. Let's welcome Mr. Gideon. Thank you. What is the role of Femsen in ensuring farmers in Nigeria have access to the right fertilizers? Thank you very much. Uh, Femsen is the Fertilizer Producers and Suppliers Association of Nigeria. Uh, like our name implies, um, we are committed to ensuring that um, we produce okay. and supply or distribute fertilizers to farmers. Uh, our role is critical to the extent that um, everything that that has to do with fertilizers and production in country uh, rests on FEPSAN. Uh, what we have done is to ensure that we understand the farmers' needs uh, uh, by encouraging them to do soil testing. When they test their soil, they can come to us with a specific type of fertilizer that is required, and our members can produce or blend uh, the right kind of um, fertilizers for them. Is there a vetting and approval process for fertilizer brands before they enter Nigeria? Yes, there is a vetting process. We have what is called the Presidential Fertilizer Initiative, all right, uh, which was the, an initiative started under the uh, President Mahmoud Buhari administration uh, that helps to grow local capacity mm. to blend and produce these fertilizers in Nigeria. Okay, So there's also a process for ensuring that um, we're able to vet the kind of products that are coming out from these blending plants, all right? Uh, and um, we encourage farmers to familiarize themselves with our website. Not only that, sorry, not just the website, but to, we also engage in speaking with farmers. We go to their farms. Personally visit them. them. Yes, and we try to speak to them, uh, like you're also trying to do, in their own language. Yes. You know, something that they can understand. They understand that, and get. That's not too complex. Quite educative. Thank you so much, Mr. Gideon, for coming. Thank you. We are very glad Thank that you. you're here today. Thank you. If you're a farmer like Sunday and you're going through challenges or you want to go into farming business, you want to know anything about agricultural world, don't forget to follow us on our Instagram to get more information, our Facebook to get more information, and of course on YouTube. And all of this address is just one, at Farm and Fortune. Right now, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. When you choose to play on the fields of the ancient agrarian marketplace, consider a good coach to take along with you. The Udongo app is your gateway to the Nigerian agricultural ecosystem. Whether you are a newbie or an oldie, signing up instantly connects you with a community of other farmers, products, agents, distributors and resources all in one place. Access our unique and simple interface from the bustling big cities to the most remote regions across Nigeria. Enjoy full access to real-time farming solutions that help you make timely and profitable decisions. Or allow our one-on-one -on -one consultancy services cheer you on with each move you make. As a newbie or oldie looking to make a big agricultural footprint, feel secure knowing you have the best coach always in your pocket. Udongo app is your personalized farming coach, available to you every time, anywhere, just at the click of a button. Download the Udongo app from the Google Play Store now and enjoy new opportunities. It's Farm and Fortune, guys, and it's game time. And on game time on Farm and Fortunes for today, I have our new gen farmers, Bolanle and Timilei. So they're going to be competing for a cash prize in farm inputs of 50,000 naira, courtesy of Farm and Fortune. Are you ready? Yes. Yeah. All right, Bolanle and Timilei. <laughs> Which of this is not a type of berry? A, silverberry, B, moonberry, C, blackberry. Silverberry. Sorry, that was the wrong answer. Next question, which of this is a type of onion? A, sweet onion, B, spring onion, C, wire onion. Spring onion. Spring onion is right, that's a type of onion. Next question, 
Maize is best planted at a depth of A, 7 centimeters, B, 3 centimeters, C, 15 centimeters. 7 centimeters. I'm sorry, darling, 3 centimeters three is centimeters. the right answer. Ah. No, you don't get a chance. 3 centimeters is the right answer. Next question. Which of the, which one is the odd one out? Listen carefully. Sweet corn, popcorn, candy corn. Who pressed the bell first? Oh, My judges are taking notes. Which of these cannot be gotten from corn? Syrup, flakes, metal. Metal. Correct. Welcome back, it's Farm and Fortune. And Bolanle and Timile are slugging it out for who's gonna win the star prize of 50,000 Naira worth of farm impute, cuts your farm and fortune. In the first round, it was a tie. So I'm gonna ask a deciding question to find out who the winner is. Are you ready? Which of these cannot be directly gotten from bees? A, honey. B, wax. C, Money. Money. <laughs> cool, we have a winner. Congratulations, Timilei. Oh, nice, nice sportsmanship. So, Timilei has won the star prize for this game at the, the, the game segment of Farm and Fortune. He's won 50,000 Naira worth of farm impute. And that's it. All right, we'll be right back. Stay with us. We have more for you on this show. Don't go anywhere. It's been wonderful in the studio today. I've learned so much on farm and fortune, and I'm sure you've learned as well. But do you know that we try out new things all the time? And especially today, I enjoyed myself. <laughs> to catch more of these clips on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, don't forget to follow at farm and fortune. <laughs> and join us same time, same station, next week for another interesting episode. Until then, I'm Frank Ganga. Yeah, you're standing spectacles. I think you're as well. Until then, I'm Fam Fam. This is Fam and, and Fortune. Fortune.